Bat Force Radio. Bat Force Radio is rated M for mature. Or should that be immature? Hey guys, Dustin Wynn. Hey, this is Scott Snyder. This is Paul Dini. And you're listening to Bat Force Radio. And you're listening to Bat Force Radio. You're listening to Bat Force Radio. This is Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman. And you're listening to Bat Force Radio, so stay tuned. All right, welcome back to For the Horde, presented by Bat Force Radio. Uh, I am absolutely excited about my two guests today. I was not expecting the both of them, so I'm like super jazzed about that. But Wes and Kevin from Alluvial have joined me. Um, super fucking pumped to have you guys. Thank you guys for making the time. How are you doing? Thank you. So just to kind of give you guys a little insight into uh, the, um, uh, the crowd that you're kind of talking to today so this is we do a, a very heavy comic nerd podcast but a bunch of marvel fans right <laughs> we're uh we're branching off into like the music stuff and i've always been into heavy music and metal and that kind of thing it only makes sense to kind of use it to uh really just kind of convert the masses the little the little kids who love uh the comics you know they're gonna be into this stuff anyway so um welcome um i want to start by saying uh, I've gotten into you guys. I'm sure as many who are uh, following you guys' career, I started and I love to see the faceless poster in the back. That's exactly where I got into you, Wes. Um, I've been a fan ever since you were on that lineup. Um, and like, I I just was amazed when you were playing the, I think it's the Layla, like your instrumental Layla cover that you do. Um, like when I saw you playing that, I think on like a DVD or something, I was like, holy shit, that's the fucking dopest thing I've ever seen. Um, and Kevin, Summer Slaughter documentary. Is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. That is the dopest shit, dude. And then you recently re re-recorded, I think, like doing a demo for one of your guitars or something. Yeah. Um, I mean, I had to do these demo videos for Seymour Duncan sometimes. And rather than like try to come up with some original thing that I might end up wanting to use for the band, sometimes I'm just like, all right, well, that might be a cool thing to do. And then that saved me a bunch of time. And yeah, for some reason, like people really like that. I think it's kind of, I thought it was kind of silly, but people tend to like it. I mean, it's because it's a piano outro, but yeah, I mean, I fucking uh, love it. Yeah. Well, I think your it's camera, like uh, your whole camera thing looks so good. I look like I'm a, like I'm fucking what? some from some Cold War like bomb <laughs> right now. Thanks, man. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute. What is it? Yeah. Yeah, dude. It's, um, I might, we might just have to do it this way. Like, how do we do this? Here we go. We'll just do the whole Whoa. show like this. Just this? Is there this you the go. Show? Just like that. The entire show. <laughs> Welcome to the broadcast. <laughs> Gorgeous. Yeah, dude. Uh, I was just telling him before you hopped on. I'm like, God damn, dude, what camera do you use? It looks amazing. And the light, the back lighting. Anyways, yeah, yeah. man. Um, so yeah, Wes, I've been a, I've been a fan of yours. Uh, I've been I've literally just been like following you on social media ever since then because um, just I loved your guitar playing in the band and I loved all your other stuff. Um, I've been a fan of Kevin's ever since I saw him live with Suffocation. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? Holy shit! And I've been following him because of that. Um, you know, anything you do, uh, you know, you do uh, stuff with, um, you're wearing the shirt, Merciless Concept. So, like, um, you know, I, I follow that, yeah. I love that. Anything you do with your writing partner, man, like, it's always touches, it's always gold, basically. And then when I heard that Wes and you were getting together, I'm like, holy shit, dude, worlds collide. Like, this is fucking <laughs> phenomenal. So, two guys who I've been following separately you know in their respective careers now coming together for a project i was like i'm all fucking over this dude so um yeah guys so what what is it what brought you together but then like what keeps you together because people jam and it doesn't work out but obviously you crack some code that you guys kind of both like so what was it that like keeps you guys hanging I'll what do you gotta say wes yeah you start i'll, that I'll start it and i'll let him finish it um yeah. so as you know Alluvial was like an instrumental band, or at least the first record came out being an instrumental record. And it was supposed to have vocals on it, but it didn't end up having vocals on it. And I wanted to make that happen. And probably we we've only the band's only done one tour in 2017. And when I moved here, 
it to Atlanta, I uh, I was just kind of in a in a very rudimentary way trying to figure out how I was going to put it together and get a vocalist and make it the full vision. And there's a friend of mine uh, named Thaddeus Gavora who does merch for a lot of different bands and uh, as as a result, he kind of knows everybody because of that. And uh, he did, did he do merch for Suffo when you were in the band? No, he, uh, he was just like my merch connoisseur. He was the, <laughs> we were in cahoots. Cause if I wanted to feed his shirt, I was like, dude, I see, I see it on Instagram. Save one XL for me and I'll, I'll send you a Suffo shirt. <laughs> Mushroom so we were head, wheeling right? dealing the whole time. Yes. That's him. Mushroom, Mushroom head. Uh, yeah. He, I was just like, He's always, for some reason, he's 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 mostly right all the time for whatever <laughs> reason. So I was just like, you know, got any ideas of who who's out there? Like dudes who are great who like aren't doing anything. And he was like, Kevin just left Suffo, and I was like, oh wow. I mean, like I don't think I ever saw Suffo live with Kevin, but I definitely had seen a lot of the videos, and I was just like, man, that would be killer. So I hit him up, and I. I kind of like cold called him. I think I hit him on uh, Messenger and I was yeah. just like, hey man, Thaddeus said like, uh, you know, you might be interested in doing some stuff. And I, at the time I got the impression that, I mean, and this is probably true that he had like a bunch of people trying to get him to do vocals in his, you know, in their band. So um, I didn't expect him to like drop everything and not that i had all these tunes together at the time anyway but i sent him some of the stuff from the first record and i'll let and i'll let kevin take it from here bro <laughs> dude like like it started with i remember i was working some shit job and it was right after i left suffo and dude my inbox on my uh, facebook was so full of just like like Indonesian kids adding me everywhere <laughs> and fucking all these bands that were like, dude, you're going to love my band. It's a one man slam project called Dino fuck. We got three <laughs> songs. Uh, we'd love for you to sing for it. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And I remember I was sifting through these while I was working at this shit job. And I remember seeing Wes's and I don't know what made me click it, but I like, I didn't know Wes at all at the time. I, when I saw the name Thaddeus come up, he's like, yeah, you know, you wrote me a message saying something like, yeah, Thaddeus is a mutual friend said you were, you might be into this. Check it out. Here's the link on Spotify. You might like it. It was such like a passive message. And I was just like, all right, I'll check it out. And I remember I had my AirPods on at work. I'm pretending to work and I had it on. And I first song colony uh, starts jamming in my ears. I'm like, Oh, it's like a prog metal band. Like I, I started judging right away. First few yeah. riffs. And then it fucking comes in. I was like, all right, I'm going to go pretend to shit for 40 minutes and I'm going to listen to the whole album. <laughs> and uh, I fell in love with it. And I think it was one of those things where I am I find I'm picky with stuff. Like, I love my slam. I love my brutal death. I love my tech metal. I love everything ab about all those different things. But like with just listening to it and not knowing Wes at all, I was like, I've never, I can't put my finger on what this sounds like. You know what I mean? Like just listening to Deep Longing, I'm like, there's not a lot of like, bands doing this in the sense of like you have the brutal sound that's going to bring in an actual brutal death metal fan base you have the, the prog te like techie uh fundamental real structure guitar playing in there and it was balanced so hard and then occlusion happened and then i saw i heard that monster breakdown song and i was like all right west gets it. it you know there's so many like tech bands that go too fast too techie too whatever and then there's in the pocket heavy and I was just like, all right, I'm, I'm intrigued. I want to write back. And we started talking. What was that? Three years ago now? Oh, shit. Yeah, it was in 2018. And I, yeah. think, I think you finally came down here in the summer of 2019 when I had had like most of the songs demoed out. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was I think you sent me one song and I sent you something back. But it took a while because. I know you were at, I was, I was trying to write stuff. I was fumbling on what I was able to do pattern wise. And, and then there was Wes finally hit me. He's like, all right, try this out. This is the demo. This is what we have. I want to know what you can do. And then I sent you that one track and right away, I just got happy as fuck messages. Just like, fuck. Yeah. We're bringing you down to Georgia. I was like, yeah. Like it just felt good. Like, 
I don't know. Ever, ever since then, I, I don't think an energy has like dipped. I think everything has been fucking smooth sailing. And then it's just been an addition of like, hey, uh, we got a full uh, album on the way. We're going to record with this guy, John. Fucking after we hear all the songs tracked and done, we, me and Wes are driving back home just going like, we just did that shit. Do you understand what that fucking sounds like at all? Like, like, do you, are we comprehending what we're doing? And then we got Tim and then we got Matt and then we got nuclear blast. And then we got music. It was just like, it's been one after another fucking like, like, Oh, I can't wait to get yeah. it moving. You know, like it's been awesome. It's been, and the, the thing I think, at least for me as a fan of both of you guys separately before this, it, this sound, the the things that I'm hearing with the first two singles, it just makes so much sense. You know, I don't know if I, I can't describe it, but the backgrounds that you guys have had and then that culminating into this project, like I think, you know, um, like, for example, you know, I, I listened to your Vox and Hops podcast, uh, Kevin. Great oh, yeah. interview, by the way. So if anybody wants to listen to that, it's a really, really great interview. Um, but you pretty much came from a place like I think just like me, you started listening to like classic rock and stuff with melody and Wes, you know, playing like the Layla lick on the guitar, a piano piece on your guitar. Like that's super melodic. And the thing about it is you guys are heavy as fuck and you have that. But then you you know how to hook the listener. And right. I think that's like when I'm listening to these songs, like I'm fucking jamming. But I'm like, rem like, oh, God, that is a sick little sweet, you know, part. And like, you know, it's like chocolate and peanut butter, man. Like I, I didn't know I was waiting for you guys to work together on something like this. So um, it's very cool to hear. Um, speaking of that, um, I just want to throw this in here real quick because on Vox and Hops, he did mention it. But hell yeah, this was like the first thing that got you. What, what if and I think this speaks so much. to like, <laughs> Fuck Yeah, dude. It speaks so much to the eventual sound, but like, just look at stuff. it. Tell me that's not the most metal thing you've ever fucking seen. And like, the reason why I said that is like, I, I remember being like 11 fucking years old in the backseat yeah. of my mom's car in like, in like a partial car seat. You know what I mean? And that was yeah. on the floor. And I remember looking at that. I was like, what the fuck is that? You know, uh -huh. I've never, like, think of it. I've never heard it. I've never, whatever. And then I remember, like, stealing it from my mom and just, like, hung that on my wall. I knew nothing about it when yeah. I first saw it. And then I, like, got into that. And then my mom was, like, oh, creeping on me that I fucking stole that from her. And then she ended up buying me a Black Sabbath record. And that was the virus that started it all. There it is. Yeah. That's so for, for the audio listeners, that was uh, Meatloaf's Bad Out of Hell cover, uh, which is one of the sickest looking things ever. Um, like, you know what the back of that CD looks like? <laughs> I can't remember what That's is it. That's the fucking funniest part. It's just him, just fucking all chubby and tight button shirt. Yeah, <laughs> there are some just like stellar songs on that record. Oh of yeah, course. dude. Did you guys know that this is one of the top five uh, selling albums of all time? I had no idea. I mean, make, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. So what it would would it be like? Uh, Appetite for Destruction. Yeah, and there's Garth Brooks in there too. Yes, there's yes. Garth Brooks records. Yeah, like Garth Brooks. There's like Appetite. Um, there's I think. Uh, oh fuck, is it like Michael Jackson, um, Elton John? It's just like it's in there with like un insane, unreal like albums. But yeah, you know, I think when you're a kid and you see an image like that, but then you listen to the music and it's so melodic, you know, it really sticks with you and kind of bakes into your DNA. And um, you know, um, it's it kind of sticks with you the whole time, but. Um, Wes, I apologize because I have a lot of picks. You know, I didn't realize you were going to come on. I thought it was going to be just Kevin. So I, uh, some of these picks are very specific to him. But oh, you know, we'll go back and forth. But the thing too is, um, <laughs> this I think I think everybody I mean, around our age can agree oh that God. this was this was something that kind of uh, spoke a lot to a certain age group. Slipknot Disaster Pieces DVD, um, specifically Kevin. Like, what did this do for you? fucked my life up <laughs> uh no I, I i dude like i was surfacing on repeat remember when dvd players you could just set a like a certain chapter to repeat yeah i would always repeat uh surfacing uh over and over and over and i was just it just I, I don't know mick was always my like favorite in the band just because he looked the most evil he, he was the most scary like just like a, a like a tank just playing guitar and then like the you know what are we the 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 Joey Jordison strapped to a chair doing like three sixties and shit? Yeah, it was nuts, you know. Yeah. It, and then and then you know what's crazier? What it all hits me like later, like being in this music scene is like cool and like 
fine and dandy, but when you get to meet these people and like hang out with them, it's fuck it fucks you up. Like uh short story with Slipknot. I loved Mick as he was always my favorite member. And then like finding out in my adult years that he's like just a brutal death metal head. <laughs> like, like on his like when Slipknot put out all like their members Spotify playlists for like shit they like, everyone else's was all like Corey's was all country rock and whatever the fuck. And then Mick. Dude, immolation, suffocation, you know, all that shit. I was just like, yes, he get. there's a reason I'm connected to this shit. And, and like, I don't know, when it comes full circle, it's dope. And, like, when I got to meet him, uh, rest in peace, Bill Tolly got me backstage passes. So Mick was a massive Internal Bleeding fan. And I was really tight with the Internal Bleeding guys. And it was awesome. me. Shout out to Chris McCarthy and Bill Tolly. And uh, we went to, uh, I remember Bill called me. It was Mother's Day. I was hanging out with my mom. And he calls me. He's like, hey, oh, what are you doing? I was like, uh, I'm hanging out with my mom. He's like, yeah, fucking great. Get out, get in your car. I got your backstage tickets right now. We're hanging out at Slipknot in Joe's Beach. I'm like, mom, I love you, but I'm going. I got to go. <laughs> and uh, I went. It was fucking the, one of the best times. And they all come out of like the, you know, they're at backstage like trailer-ish area in Jones Beach. And they're 20 buses. And uh, make a super fucking chill, like super cool dude. And it was just like one of those moments. I was like, I remember I, like, I'm trying to like say all these things in my head, but not say it. It's like, yeah. what's up, man? Fist bump. And then in my head, I'm like, dude, what you did on the DVD was so sick. And fucking back on the self title. Like, <laughs> like, I'm just in my head saying all that shit. I don't know. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah, man. It, it's cool to, it's cool to see like how much, you know, I think, you know, you guys um, around this age now, like it's so easy for the listener to, connect because you're growing up on the same thing we're growing up with like Wes one of the things like the first thing that I ever got me into honestly wasn't even I didn't even hear a note you played I saw either a picture or a video and your cowboys from hell tattoo on your arm on your forearm right this motherfucker has that tattoo on his forearm like he knows his shit like <laughs> I'm gonna like whatever he's about and that like boom right there like that and of course like I'm like yeah no exactly everything he's playing is fucking legit so <laughs> yeah I mean I'll put it this way I was definitely a fan of Slipknot, but the time that that DVD came out, I didn't have it. So for me, the 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 teenage years sort of stuff that like really got me stoked about the idea, like addicted to the idea about being in a band and touring, were Slayer, Live Intrusion, and then um, obviously the three Pantera home videos, and then there was that Megadeth Euthanasia making of uh, documentary. I guess. Those, uh, all of those that I mentioned were the <laughs> things that got me all stoked out. But yeah, I, I, once I saw the disaster pieces later, I mean, it is pretty terrifying. And it's like, it's also crazy to think of them being on their second record and they're just yeah. like that big. Yeah. And, yeah. Like, <laughs> and that's the one for me. Like, they're like, I love, I don't know if any of you guys do it, but do you guys like finding death metal and non death metal places? Like, uh, on the hunt for it? Explain. So like uh, the end of everything on Iowa, uh -huh. that track. It's it's like I I would I would put money on it that that is the one song everybody skips because of the way it sounds when it starts. You are wrong, fucked and over. Uh -huh. It's like that Moni song. People hit uh -huh. next and they want to hear the fucking da 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 da. -da. But dude, that song has this fucking riff that's like da 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 da. -da. Yeah. But you have to like so, like. I'm going to say this, but you got to kind of suffer until that part. And then when it comes in, it's just like a long island sledge. Boom, boom, got her, boom, back, yeah. boom, 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 got her. And it's just mean. And it's, it, but that's, that's the shit I look for in like anything. Um, and it just, I don't know. I was just still yeah, moaning yeah. over split not. But, but back to what you were saying, Pantera, my youth spread from like the Aussie shit into Slipknot only because like the, the story of all that was, all right, Who's Black Sabbath? Who sings for it? It's Ozzy. What does Ozzy do? Go to Ozzy.com and whatever at, on AOL at the time, and you find Ozfest. Who's on Ozfest? Machine yep. Head, Slipknot, Pantera. And like that's when I fell for Pantera hard. And I bought that fucking at the time. It was eight forever ago. That black album. It's like a greatest hits album, but it had a DVD in it. And the DVD was a bunch of like mixture of all that footage. And that was another fucking big shiner for me. Yeah, dude. It's uh, we were like, I feel like, I mean, I think I'm like the same age around you guys, but I feel like we had so much, like there were so many, um, gateway drug bands oh my that God, like, yeah. it, I just feel like there was such a good time 
to get into it because all those bands at the time were still playing, they're still touring and playing shows with like their influences. So mm -hmm. if you, you go to their show and you see who they're opening for, or you go to Ozfest and it's every band that like influences them, you get into that. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, there's so much right now that it's like, I, I just feel like it's like an overload of, of stuff for kids. And um, it's hard to like, swim through the the sea to like figure out all right who's the one like what's the gateway drug band that are that's feeding the kids today you know and uh i know that that gojira album just did real massive i think so you know it feels like it's them but they're kind of they're kind of older so i don't know is there like what do you guys think like who's like the beacon band right now that's like feeding the children um i think probably the new wave of sort of metalcore bands um like wage war and i prevail like i think you know in the in a in a very broad sense metalcore is probably the best goddamn thing that's ever happened to the economy of heavy metal because like fucking very rarely is a kid gonna start with suffo or deicide they're gonna start mm -hmm. with something that's like yeah. much more palatable and then they you know like it you find your way them, and then they start going for the harder and harder shit um i think that like those are the types of bands that are playing like the 1500 cap rooms that are getting kids involved right now and then they end up getting passed on to us and our friends yeah <laughs> and then we make them elitist they're like yeah you didn't know about this demo yeah <laughs> No, yeah. dude, I, I, I have a, dude, I've been like up for the past two days, like thinking the world's ending, like just staring at my ceiling. <laughs> like I'm, I'm out there right now trying to find bands that bring me that fucking like, mm, I can't, I need more. I need more, mm -hmm. but I keep going back to like old nineties and two thousands demos and CDs and stuff. But like, I'm on this kick right now where like, like I'm, I'm that guy that's, I, I, I sound like a tin, like hat, like tin foil hat guy. I'm like, yeah, Volbeat, right? We all know Volbeat. Like, you know, very rockabilly kind of like style band. Have you ever heard of Dominus? Mm, no. It was it was it was Volbeat before they were Volbeat. I swear to fucking God, it's the heaviest death metal record of all time. <laughs> and it really? just, it fucking blows my mind. Hold on. So like I actually have this little like streaming device here that I can send signal to this. Am I is that cool if I do that? Yeah. To the to the pot the, to the thing? Uh, get it in there, Kev. Get fucking in. god send it right in uh i swear to god i will pay any money to see volbeat and you sneak one of these fucking songs in i'm going to jail um all right so maybe don't do it but it's fucking awesome um i gotta find the fucking thing god damn it i forget the name of the record but it's right while, here. while you do that i could tell a quick story yeah go for um, it it's a thaddeus story so i think wes you might have been on this tour I can't remember what it was. It might have been what was it the DVD was from or the the documentary was about where you're playing uh, Layla Slaughter. It was Slaughter 2012. It might have been that. So was he doing merch on that tour or was he working on that tour? I feel like no, he did. Uh, he did a tour right before that uh, uh -huh. with doing merch for Fetus, the Metal Alliance tour of 2012. Yeah, Okay, so it must have been there. Uh, House of Blues Hollywood. Um, they had the merch in the parking lot on the outside behind the venue. And I don't know how. I mean, I just see him all the time at shows working. Like, he's always working his show. So I see him. That's what it was. He was doing um, Veil of Maya. He was doing something with Veil of Maya. So he's on the stage, you know, with Veil of Maya before, as helping him set up as they're going on the stage. I want to say Veil of Maya. It was like Veil of Maya, um, Trivium, and In Flames. Like massive fucking tour for them. And so um, I see him on the stage and like he's wearing this fucking cat T-shirt. You know, this is like 2012. And it was before he dropped all the weight, you know. So he was a, 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 a bigger dude. And he just fucking sticks out because he's got this massive curly hair. He's a big guy in this fucking cat T-shirt at this metal show. And I'm like, who is this guy? And so I saw him later doing merch at the Metal Alliance tour. And I, I walk up to him and I don't remember whose booth he was at. But I was like, hey, dude, I was like, sorry, you work on the stage at uh, Vela Maya. He's like, oh, yeah, cool. So I talked to him, whatever. And like, I kind of step off to the side and he looks over to whoever else he's working the booth with. And he goes, yeah, he's doing a uh, stage. Uh, uh, what does he say? He's like, uh, he's doing uh, uh, like stage management or something like he's like, yeah, I was, I was doing stage uh, management for Vela Maya. And the guy who he said that to 
got so fucking mad. And he was like, just because you set up a fucking microphone doesn't mean you were doing anything else. And <laughs> my buddy and I like cried laughing at how mad that made that guy. Like, and Thaddeus Sad was day. fucking laughing too. <clears throat> but I, it was just so funny how like he made that guy so mad just by like, eh, just working the stage, no big deal. But, um, <laughs> yeah, dude. He's, he's a funny guy. You're just like you fucking. Thaddeus on here. Je- oh I really, would, you know, like. It makes so much sense considering that he's responsible for the birth of this band a little bit. That's fucking awesome to hear. But no, I'm going to tell you all about his Oceano days too. Oh yeah. He was doing merch for them as well as a bunch of other bands. He's got to have so many awesome stories. He's witnessed the trajectory of many bands. Um, I mean, like I'd say he's probably one of the more tenured crew people um, I've ever met. And Everyone loves him. So, I mean, it would probably be, it would be an interesting podcast to be able to talk about a lot of stuff. My last memory of Thaddeus was when, actually, I've seen him in Portland when we played out there, but my favorite one is like, uh, it was that, it was that summer slaughter that Fetus played and he was working with them. And I went and said hi to all the guys and they were like, yeah, come hang out after the show. I go knock on their bandwagon door and I walk in and like John has got his glasses on reading a book. Trey's, uh, Trey's drinking a glass of wine, sitting down and like, uh, Sean is on his laptop, and then there's fucking daddy. He's like, What's up, man? Like, let's go. Like, you want to do? It's like he's carrying all the energy of that whole bandwagon just in one human, and everyone else is like, Yeah, just go have your fun, man. Whatever. Yeah, that's <laughs> fucking awesome, dude. I got the record here. Let's see. Tell me if this cuts through. Oh, there it goes. Dude, there it is. <sighs> Volbeat. What? What Are you fuck? kidding? Wow. I didn't know this. Bro, it's one of these things that I go to the show and I'm just drinking because I'm more mad knowing they're not playing this. Like, that's in their brains, but they're holding it from you. And then, wow. like, and then the same story for Gojira. They were called Godzilla before Gojira, and they were just a brutal death metal band. What? What? Uh, what year is this? Uh, fucking ninety five or some oh shit. Oh my god! Now, uh, now, real quick, I have to do it because we were just talking about Gojira. But, uh, you guys know about that though? Do you know about the pre Gojira days? I know of the name change. Oh my god! I'll well, check this out real fast, and then I'll we'll go back to chatting about good times. But this, I I think I just need this. You guys are like my therapy to show shit like this too. <laughs> Gojira. Oh. oh god, yeah. Oh god. <laughs> it's just like you know, this is where in my brain I just say like fuck the bands that well not fuck bands, but like fuck the terminology of like saying getting a mature sound. Yeah. We all do this for a reason because it's death metal and it's sick. Yeah. Why why mature when you can go dumber? Sorry, what? Hey, I, I mean, went. there's there's something about their sound that's always had like domination and covenant era morbid angel, but like oh, also, for sure. but also like in this weird way, load era Metallica, like something about the Sonics yeah. and certain things that they went for. So like, I always think that it was in there, and like while I haven't been the biggest fan of them watching them mature on record, Gojira, I mean, every time that I see them and I hear like new songs, I'm like, oh, okay, I totally get it now. It's always something that I, I that has a, a much more of an impact on me live than it does when I hear the records. That being said, I mean, they have been a band for fucking 25 years and um, they probably want to pump the brakes on the the techie sort of dm shit and yeah. more power well, to them. this is the one thing i want to say though about gojira that i respect is that they bring it back they're not a band that like they play you some heavy shit and then they change completely and you'll never hear that again they always sneak in a fucking little thing and then like look at that tour bill they have their direct support is knocked loose they are in their heads metal children like in that in that um 
they posted a video on their Instagram. I don't know if it became a music video, but it was just them jamming. And the one thing I noticed because of my ignorance, death metal slam brain, their bassist is wearing a discarnate shirt, which is dying. It's like a dying fetus band from Germany. And I'm just like, oh my God, I play with them at Death Feast. Like that's that's like a death metal band. And, that, and then uh, Mario is wearing a Morbid Angel shirt. So it's like, they're all just like, I bet they're home. And they, like on their promos, they're like this big rock metal band. But at home, they're just fucking like, dude, you got to hear this new fucking cannibal record. It's got, it's so sick. Like, you know what I mean? Like they're just dudes that want to play metal. Yeah. And I think they just know what they have to do and they're doing it. And then they like, like the song Lizard Skin is just like a chunky fucking song. And like even, even uh, fucking whales and shit. Like that song is heavy to the fucking masses, but like they know how to balance it really well. Mm -hmm. um, and look, I'm looking at the discography of fucking what? 10 albums? Ten, well, 10 types of record, whatever it is. Damn. It's so sick. Yeah. It's, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm totally, um, I haven't been as big into them as I was, you know, uh, a couple albums back. But every time I hear like the new records that they do, I'm like, God damn, these guys sound like they're fucking like they sound fucking great. Like they just sound great. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, the like, obviously, you know, they're they're at the top of their game with what they have access to. And, and so the production is going to sound fantastic and the presentation and everything. The songwriting is great. And um, yeah, but they produce it all themselves, don't they? Out of their studio in Brooklyn. Andy think, Wallace mixed this new record. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Someone, someone, Logan Mater mixed and mastered the Wave All Flesh. Uh, I forget who did the two in between there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they're heavily <laughs> involved in engineering. I would say, like, I don't know. We're still young, Kevin. Like, the thing is, is once you get to be like, mid 40s late 40s and 50s i bet it's really fucking hard to play like crazy shit you know like which is in a prime example of a band who can still sound good and has always sounded good as like alice in chains <laughs> we're gonna try i'm gonna give it my all but we're gonna uh, do it i'm just Dude. saying i'm just saying that like you know look at the bulk of bands who played this deadly shit in their 20s and then if they still have careers now they don't sound as good they just don't Hold sound on. Together. So like this, but this is where my brain's <laughs> jaded as fuck is because my first favorite big tour was suffo morbid angel and it's just like when i got to meet all those guys they sounded just as badass as i remember on cd and stuff and i'm just like all right goals Dude, like, but they had it. all young dudes. The drummer. Yeah, hold on, but Tuck, I'm talking about like Tuck, yeah, Fuller's fucking insane. But I'm talking about Tucker on vocals and like sounding sick and playing his bass and, but like, like that's dude. fine. I'm saying drummers and like, yeah. they have a young ass guitar player and a young. Well, Matt ass better stay in shape. That's all, man. They suffo. You have Charlie. You have yeah, but Garrett. hold on. Yeah, but the the difference with them is like I would still say if they had Cole Ross still, they'd be fucking like still flying. Mike Smith is still flying. Uh like they're all doing their shit. You know what I mean? But there's there's definitely like the people that I, I know what you mean. I'm I know what you're say saying. For sure. And I bet you that Hobbs would agree that Suffo has never sounded better than they do now. Since you were in the band. Oh, well, for sure. Since Marathi and Charlie and everyone, they I'm not saying they sounded like shit before, but they never sounded better than they do now. Yeah, I give a lot but, of credit for Charlie on that. He's a very punchy, meticulous guitarist, but like, I don't know. I love Eric's drumming, but Carl Ross to me is the hardest hitting. He looks like he's like sitting, taking a shit. Like, you don't, if you didn't see his hands move, he's just chilling. But his fucking legs and fucking hands, his, his like <laughs> wrist snare hits are like, like it's just fucking nonstop. Like, watch my buddy George from Dehumanize has the sickest drum cam video of just from an iPhone, just watching him uh, play Funeral Inception, and he, he he's not even fucking, yeah, like just fucking wailing, and he's just doing the symbol. He's not even moving his shoulders. It's just what's the drummer? Just, what's Origins drummer's name? Uh, John Longstreth. That's another motherfucker. He's insane. Like, he's another one. He's in Hate Eternal. He's in Origin. He's he's doing he's all been, sorts of other projects. He's in Gorguts for like a yeah. little bit too. Yeah, I mean, he's a long, guy. Long stress that guy. You call in when it's when it's real fast, and he yeah, he, he's that one. He's got it. Um, and I got the jam with him a little bit on the side. Me and him were trying to work out some side project thing, and oh. dude, he's a monster. He's a monster. 
Yeah, it, and it looks like sometimes he's barely fucking moving. Like, but yeah, same thing. They, it's just in their brain. Like, so uh, the next part I'm thinking is more like, <laughs> what do you think yeah. about that? It's like, all right, sick. Yeah, keep. <laughs> Yo, dudes, I have to jet because I got to go teach. But uh, this has been a great interview to hang out with. I feel like we should do a longer one of these whenever we are to because doing interviews with Kevin is fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, yeah, hear that, hear that people. Hey, man, I appreciate that. I appreciate oh, that. Uh, <laughs> that's just gonna be the promo. Just that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thumbnail. Okay. Yeah, man, Wes. Thanks so much, dude. Like I said, you know, I wasn't even expecting you. So the fact that you hopped on was fucking awesome. Yeah, dude. Uh, let's let's do another one soon. And thanks, uh, thanks for having us. Thanks for having yeah. me. I'll see you. I'll talk to you soon, Kev. Hello, Papa. All right, later. Later, later dude. Yeah, I got some time to spare. I got oh, a. I, I know we have another. I have another one at two, so it's one yeah, thirty-eight now. That one. We got oh, another yeah, yeah. ten so on some odd minutes or so. All right, so the, we were just talking. We were just talking about. Uh, yeah, okay. Look at that fucking picture, man! Like, <laughs> uh, pops. I can tell you where that was. That was at Blondie's in uh, Chile. Oh yeah, the for the photographer. Oh fuck, I forget his name, but it's on your Instagram. That's where I pulled this from. Mm. Um, fantastic photo. And uh, I mean, like you know, this is something you show your kids. Hey, you want you want to know what daddy did? Look what <laughs> yeah. daddy did. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. So th- this is good tour. this was my introduction to you. Is I was standing like probably in one of those shows, like right there in the front. What venue and, were you at? Uh, it was the Glass House in Pomona. Oh, okay. and it was the was it the Morbid Angel tour? It sounds like it. Uh, you know what? I had my death metal resume in front of me. Where did it go? <laughs> Yeah, um, I, all my tour lanyards. I was moving them around. I usually hang them on my wall, but I was using them for something. Oh, they're right here. Hold on. I I drank the perfect amount of beer that night. Um, just which was perfect. just not enough, apparently. Come on. Well, it was the it was the perfect amount because I still remember the show. Okay, that, then that's just enough. Yeah, you're good. Just enough. I I remember the, I remember I was fucking like great. I felt great. Um, the mute the fucking bands killed it. You specifically, dude, like. I, I swear to God, man, like it's it's very rare. I feel like where like I'll stop watching like the show and just focus in and like trip out. I'm like, this fucking guy is <laughs> like my thing in my head was like, this guy's having the fucking time of his life right now because like yeah. uh, at some point, I don't know if it was near the end of the set or whatever, but you were like very you made it very clear. You you thank the fans. You're like, I just want to say thank you to all the fans. You know, I was just a regular guy. And now I'm up here with fucking suffocation. And you took a selfie with the crowd and like this fucking guy, man, he's oh. living his dream. Yeah, I just dude. realized Glass House, we had AJ come up on stage. Yeah. we He did Funeral Inception with me. A, AJ Magana, shout out to the boy. He sang for Discord. He sang yes. for Defeated Saturday. Well, this, like, dude, I feel slam like. Slam legend. Suffocation, suffocation is like, you guys are like, Suffocation is like the hangout for like all these bands. Like who else is, was in Discord who was also in Suffocation? Uh, well, I mean, Der- Derek Boyer uh, was, I don't. You know what? I don't. Dude, Derek is the guy that always surprises me with like, "Hey man, remember? I, I, well, when I was chill with those guys when I was in Deeds of Flesh. Oh, when I was in Dying Fetus. Fuck. When I was in, and he he always just drops it on me. I'm like, oh fuck, I totally, I I just Dying you know, it's fetus. one of those things in the passing of like, he was always going around. He was in Vital Remains, I believe, for a bit. He was oh, in, yeah. uh, I believe he was in Fetus for a short bit, and he was yeah. in, uh, I think I believe he was in Deeds. I believe he was in uh, the dude. One of the best bands no one talks about is his original band, which also had AJ singing in it. Uh, Deprecated. They have a four song or four or five song little EP rolling around the internet there where they retract. There was a demo or no, I'm sorry. They had an EP and then they re recorded the EP in like the mid 2010 ish, whatever. And Hobbs did guitar on it. And it's fucking incredible. Yeah, dude. It, it's uh it's just like i feel like it's like a revolving door just like if you go onto suffocations wikipedia you click on the members and then you just follow all the bands that oh have yeah you'll be in, you'll be in a good spot oh yeah and it's just like you said man that's like your new uh that's like your new lineup for ozfest where you get into one band and you're like all right who else is this guy playing with? Well, well i can run down the list right now i think it's more not even about um who else was in that other band it was more just long island you're talking long yeah. island death metal yeah. scene is you know, think about all right. The big three is suffocation, internal bleeding, pyrexia. Those are the three that like survived. Then you're talking old school, repudiation, disfigured, um, 
they're all kind of like they share, they, they just all shared members, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, members went from like guy, guy Marche played guitar. His first band out here was Pyrexia. He started Pyrexia or one of the first members of Pyrexia then went to internal bleeding, did driven to conquer and all that stuff. Then went to suffocation and he was there running guitarist for however long until Charlie f- took over. Um, then you have who else was in stuff? Well, Charlie filled in for internal bleeding for some uh, out of the country shows on bass, um, and also dehumanized, dehumanized. The, no sharing of members in that fashion, but again, just borrowing everybody. Uh, my guitarist from Merciless played in dehumanized, um, and then you have all of internal bleeding. Chris McCarthy was in bands like Without Remorse, Revenants. Um, who, who else is in there now? Sean Kennedy was in the band previously. Was also in Revenants. Also in uh, internal bleeding, and then um, dude, it's every, everybody shares each other, and that's yeah. how I actually got involved. With the Suffo guys was we did this tour, which is right here. It was my first Pyrexia tour, which was this guy right here. Look at that lineup. Let's see if it focuses. So oh, Suffo, Cataclysm, yeah. Jungle Rot, Pyrexia, Internal Bleeding. So we called it the it's a Carnival of Death. We called it the Carnival of Friends. Um, Pretty much, it was just like all like oh, and Blue from um, he's now the basis of Fit for an Autopsy, uh, but his original band um, Dysentery, he was always like our other fucking brother in terms of slam death metal bands. He was filling in for Internal Bleeding on this tour, uh, but dude, this was I remember the first time I got to hang out with like Suffo every day, mm-hmm. and then I remember Derek and them coming up to me like, dude, you fucking sound insane. Like we didn't know you existed. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was just one of those things that happened because Frank did the first two weeks and Frank was the first one being like, holy shit, this is nuts. Mm. And I got word that he talked to Derek and he talked to everybody and kind of embedded me in their brains. So the minute I left Pyrexia, they started hitting me up. They started wow. just ch- ch- chatting to me, just like seeing where I'm at, seeing what's going on. And uh, I was thankful for that whole stuff experience, man. It was fucking sick. Yeah, man. It, it, I mean, like for me, at least it turned me on to you. So you know, it, it got me into into you a lot more and a lot more in depth, and then it led to me listening uh, to these guys, to you guys. Oh, yeah. Um, Merciless, uh, just fucking this album, dude. Like I remember when I first heard this, like when you guys first announced it or whatever, and it came out, and I was listening to it. I'm like, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was just one of those yes, like yeah. We're that band that's always making a comeback. So it's kind of like you know, the, half that album is songs from 2011, 2012. And then like the other half is all new stuff. So it's like, yeah. we always had songs. We always had really cool moments where actually, dude, it's, it's like, I, it's almost like I prepared for this. Like uh, <laughs> I was just cleaning my room the other day and I'm going through old flyers and stuff, but like we had a cool run, man. We had like fetus was hitting us up to do d- some Hell direct yeah. support shows. And uh, speaking of dysentery, this is another flyer that I have laying around. So it's parasitic ejaculation, splattered entrails, torture, inception, mercy blow us. And That's what else so I got good. here? One of my favorite shows that I fucking got hammered and like cried at. Where is it? <laughs> it's in here. I, I put it somewhere. It well, it was a hate breed show that we played, and it was hate breed, shadows fall, dying fetus, contortionist, merciless. Oh concept. wow, bro! And it was just a few days after my birthday, and it was in two thousand thirteen. Yeah. And, uh, dude, I remember just being so fucking hammered. I was hanging out with. That's when I really first met the dying fetus guys. And I was getting all hammered with them. I hung out with the dudes in Shadows Fall. Got to meet Jamie. Got to hang out with their crew. And then I just, I remember my my friends dropped me off home. And, you know, you get out of the car. You open the front door. And you're just kind of like realizing none of your senses are working anymore. You're like, oh, there's lights on in my house. I got to hope I fall in my bed. My mother just asked me, like, how was your day? I was like, oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, remember just, I remember just feeling it because, you know, Hate Breed does something cool that they don't usually do in other venues or states, or at least I don't know about, but whenever they play Long Island, because they're a, they're a Connecticut hardcore band, their whole fan base in Long Island is the old school hardcore kids. Like I played with them in Virginia. On, we played two, two dates of that same tour. We opened for them in Virginia. And I will, I will flat out say for myself and my fan base, my fanning of the old hate breed stuff, they played one song, they played empty promises. And then it was over. And I was like, mm. Oh, we just drove all this time just to see that. I was uh, that sucks. <laughs> and then like, and then I got to meet them that night. They signed a shirt of mine. I had an old hate breed shirt. I was like, "What are you guys doing for Long Island?" They're like, uh, "What do you mean?" I was like, "Well, it's sold out. You know, it's sold out show at Revolution." They're like, 
oh shit, they started looking at each other like, all right, shit, that's cool. Dude, the first fucking song, they open up with like fucking Smash Your Enemies. Then they play fucking, you know, Worlds Apart. They're hitting you with fucking yeah. first two records, the whole show. And then they end with like Destroy Everything and the fucking I'll Be Heard. They just threw it in there. They didn't even want to play it. They, they The whole show was a fucking fight. Like it was just oh, a clobbering mess. And dude, it's so cool. And that, that that's why it hit me. I remember, oh dude, I remember a girl met up with me on that show and I fucking bailed on her. Because it was like, uh, dude, it all started. It's Fetus's fault. I blame them because <laughs> Fetus, they um, they never play schematics. Every time I see them, it's my favorite song of theirs, and one of my favorites. And I was explaining to the girl, I was just like, they, you know, I really hope they play this song. Like I'm drunk, I'm just venting uh -huh. <laughs> to someone that doesn't even know what I'm talking about. I was like, yeah, they play this one song. They never fucking play. And as I'm saying that that, that they don't play it, the sample comes on. Oh shit. <laughs> And then I just threw my beer across the room and I was never to be seen again. I was just moshing for the rest of the night. It was just That's a blast. That's great, dude. That is some good shit. I hope we can start doing that again in the next few months, dude. We need to yeah. get tours going. So as far as like, uh, as far as like from what you're hearing, um, what is the time frame on what, when you think, at least with like your stuff, you'll get, you'll get to go out there. Uh, I mean, hopefully there's stuff we can announce soon. Like we got, we, you know, we got stuff that we're being offered we got stuff that we're trying to get out onto, but I don't want to jinx it. And I don't right. want to, it's all about location, right? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if we do in the States, like what's the mask rules, what's the capacities, what's the fucking bullshit. And then if it's overseas, we're hoping like we can even like, it's still in, I think in Germany, they just opened their restaurants. They oh just God. like, you know, I don't see them jump into shows. Like we've had restaurants here in New York open all pandemic. And everyone's yeah. been bitching here like it's a fucking plague or like, you know, it's like, oh, how come I have to wear my mask from my car to my fucking restaurant? It's like, shut up. Just put it on. Go get your food and get out. <laughs> yeah. But like, um, yeah, where other places like the UK just opened their bar, uh, their restaurants and bars and shit. Yeah, we've had it all pandemic. Just like, oops, sit us like if there's booths, you got to separate like a, have one in the middle. Who gives a shit? Go, yeah. go enjoy yourself. That, that's the thing is um, there's a lot of stuff already being announced, but like the fear is. You know, obviously that stuff can get can get canceled again, you know, and, and then well, another that's what one it is, is it, it all all it takes is fucking like five, ten people and like yeah. to fuck up something so big. And yeah. like we're seeing Bloodstock Fest in the UK. But the thing is, most of the bands are based out there. But uh, I mean, I did see an updated flyer that I think like Devin Townsend's on it and all this other stuff. So I'm hoping, dude, I'm yeah. just hoping, you know, yeah, Knock on wood. Um, I want to give you some time to to chill before your next one. I know you got another one coming up, but I want yeah. to. Real quick, touch on this because it oh. kind of full circle for you. That was um, one of the best days of my life. Yeah, dude. Like you, and the you talked about how you got into the uh, the Meatloaf album, got you into the Ozzy and the Black Sabbath stuff, and then you were like, "All right, well, what what are they? Oh, they're on tour. Ozzy's on tour with who?" And you saw mm -hmm. the um, my Ozfest lineup, and then fucking years later, you are playing Ozfest. So again, yeah. full circle. And this was, I mean, uh, historic is not a a uh, big enough word for this one. Was this the first time that they split it into Ozfest and Ozfest? Like, I don't five? believe so. I think they did split it previously because okay. they just had separate days because previous years slip not played. And I actually uh -huh. got to speak with uh, you know V Man and you know those guys, and they were saying like you know I think Mick was in the Mick was doing something medical wise, and Corey had Stone Sour going, and everybody was just in their different places. Like That's actually right. on on that first day, I don't remember the how what his name goes by, but. Uh, Sid, their DJ, had his own his own DJ set on mm. the first day with us okay. um, because in the front. All right, so the way this is, it was weirdly set up, uh, DJ but Star there was DJ a Star nuclear. Stream, I think. Well, yeah. Okay. So yeah. So then there was. Um, we had uh, our own stage for nuclear blast bands. So it was like we had our own little stage party to the side, and then there was the two main stages. But they broke it up pretty well um huh. but yeah that was my experience but dude i remember we played i ran off that stage like a fucking kid i got my fucking little backstage like I, it's right here i got my little backstage pass i was flashing around i got the you know hung out with fucking jared from machine head i was hanging out with fucking that's where i met doc here we go doc from uh, bad wolves we were hanging out shout out to fucking dan kenny and pat kenny love those boys and dude it was like the one of the funnest days ever. So, and I convinced the guys, the Suffo guys, to stay an extra day because we had a day off the next day. Mm -hmm. I was like, dude, let's just stay here. Yeah, just stay here and just fucking drink and hang out. The drive is not so bad to the next show. Like, 
just hang out, network, fuck around. And dude, it was, it was fantastic. I got, dude, I had a fun time. I was sitting with Dan, Kenny and them from Suicide Silence and we were just fucking having a ball. We were <laughs> partying very hard and then just watching Deftones. And it was oh. just like, what are we like? What What's better than right now? You know right, what I mean? Yeah, yeah dude. Um, Another band. God damn. So going so strong for so many years, putting out some of the best shit in their career, man. It's fucking unbelievable. Yeah. They make you think they're tired and then they hit you with another one. Like, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. You know, everyone's like, white pony, white pony. And then Diamond Eyes comes out. You're like, oh, yeah. fuck, dude. Like now this. Yeah. When Diamond yeah. Eyes came out, I remember thinking at the time, heard it for a couple of times. I was like. I, I might like this better than White Pony. How is that possible? Right. That's what I'm saying. A lot of people had that feeling. Like the yeah. first song, bow, 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 oh, bow. Yeah. You know, like, what are we doing? And uh, I think it. my favorite, one of my favorite songs, probably top three now is, um, is it Beware the Butcher? No. How's, what's, the, no, fucking, I'm getting I will it. say this right now. I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not someone you can call a fan, but I'm the guy that presses play and doesn't stop playing. Here's, you know what I mean? I, I just let it run. And I'm like, and they're like, oh, what's this? I say yeah. Deftones. Like it's just it's an experience to me. What's you, what's? Go for I, it. I, I'm trying to think on Diamond Eyes. It's um the riff. Dun 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 dun. dun I think dun, it's, dun, dun, that's dun, the next dun, song dun. right after. Uh, and then it Whatever. Yeah, yeah. That, that song. Oh, whatever it is. Yeah. That's yeah, when I was like, hard. this is the fucking sickest shit. It's hard. It hits you hard. It's like, dude, like, I don't know what it is about, like, rock bands that know how to do breakdowns. Like, side note, this is unrelated, but also related, like, in terms of production, like how Deftones is such a massive band. One of the funniest things in my head that always comes through is, what is it? I think Eve Six. You know the band <laughs> yeah. Eve Six? Dude, yeah. they have the nastiest snare tone I've ever heard on any album. Like, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know that... I don't know the name of the song, but it was in like Out Cold, like that surfer uh, snowboard movie, uh -huh. and they fucking snare. I remember just being like uh -huh. massive. But so anyway, side dude, ADD. do you follow the Eve Six? I guess he's the the singer. I don't know the main dude. I don't follow anything All I right. got going on. Follow him on Twitter, dude, because yeah. he is literally interacting with like. I mean, he is fucking amazing on Twitter. One of the best Twitter follows <laughs> because okay. like he straight up. I forget recently he was like, he's yo. He's like death metal bands. So I want to do a tour with a death metal band. What death metal band should I tour with? And legit, all these fucking bands, like legitimate bands, are like, bro, sure. let's do it. Let's get this fucking going. I mean, and he's fuck. like, dude, he's listening to him and shit. And he's a great fucking interaction. What's on. his What's his handle? I think it's just Eve Six, dude. Like, oh, Twitter. it's just on the band's page. Yeah, yeah. It's, oh, it's, fuck's uh, sake. It's like I don't know if he's the only remaining like original member, but um, he does it off of the Eve Six Twitter and a fantastic follow, dude. Like I, I got to follow look. him from the alluvial page. <laughs> do it and then fucking go on a fucking Eve Six tour, or at least a show or something. But uh, dude, I don't want to keep you too much for your next one, but I do want to shout out uh, your links. Yeah, um, thank you. Let let us know what's what's your Twitch. Uh, what yeah, right there, baby. Twitch TV, Twitch TV slash Kev Muller. You'll find me there. Uh, I'll be doing a uh, record release kind of listening party, performance party on the twenty eighth around Beautiful. 8 p.m. Eastern time. So make sure you check it out. Twitch.tv slash Kev Muller. Uh, I got some things in the works, man. I'm trying to like turn it into a podcast thing down the road. We'll get some, you know, performances. Follow me there. You'll, when Alluvial goes on tour, we'll be streaming it from there. So it's it's going to be a cool hub for the band if you're really checking out the new Alluvial stuff. Pre-order Sarcoma um, comes out again on the 28th. Alluvialofficial.com um, as well as uh, Kings Road Merch is our merch store at the moment it's also on our website you'll see it there we got some i think limited um we're, we're i think we're running kind of low on the on the vinyls so check those out um i think it's a pr print out of a thousand so worth getting your hands on badass hey man this was fucking rad i really appreciate it dude no problem um like wes said you guys are obviously always welcome back maybe sometime after the record's out and um you know maybe when there's like hope for some live stuff and uh just to get just to get that going so yeah, yeah, dude, this, this fucking rule. Thanks so much for taking the hey, time, man. No problem. Thank dude. Thanks for having me. Like Wes said, we'll get it together. Uh, one other shameless plug. Follow me on my Instagram, people. Instagram is where you'll find anything about me because I always be posting on there. Stories and all sorts of shit. Just at Kev Muller. Yeah, it's yeah. It's true. I stole some of your pictures from there. For, for <laughs> I'm looking thing. at my own feed here, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, dude. Well, have Later a good one, brother. Pleasure.